Hello, my name is uh, Pavel Shimerda. I'm working currently for Red Hat and uh, I was actually working for like one year on the Network Manager project. Uh, so I would like to tell you that uh, I'm no longer officially uh, on this project inside Red Hat, uh, but here in the open source world, so I'm still an upstream contributor. I'm still still quite active. It's uh, just not my everyday work, and uh, I cannot really speak for all the developers of uh, Network Manager because I have some vision. They have some. They have some uh, personal visions as well. So uh, we often try to uh, put our visions to together and, and do something useful. Uh, I participated on a major redesign of the whole thing, which uh, has been done during past like uh, three quarters of a year. So it's, it's quite a new thing. It's uh, not something you can see in the released versions of Network Manager. So you can you can learn uh, what's uh, going on and what's uh, what's uh, up if you don't follow uh, mailing lists closely and sometimes even the mailing lists and, and stuff like that don't show you everything. Uh, my uh, my personal focus uh, was uh, network manager, uh, Linux kernel interoperability and the whole uh, the whole part of the code that deal with the uh, Linux kernel configuration. So it's uh, it's pretty much a good topic for uh, this conference. As well, I'm very much focused in address and routing configuration stuff, which is pretty much related to what what the kernel does. Uh, and there are some uh, uh, some uh, other things I've been doing. Uh, like um, the key file configuration, which is the native uh, network manager configuration format. We have a couple of other formats uh, supported, such as uh, Red Hat's uh, IFC, IFG files. And I've also done something uh, about testing and, and stuff like that. Very, very uh, briefly about uh, network manager. Uh, there's a couple of points uh, what I would expect for a network configuration service to achieve. So it's, it's a reading configuration from files, but not only that, uh, it's uh, simple scripts in distributions like uh, Fedora and Debian and so on always could read configuration files and do something, something with that. Uh, but uh, what we expect in, uh, with a modern network configuration service is to allow other tools, other services uh, to talk to the service and change the configuration on the fly, uh, which, is, which is a bit important for stuff like virtualization and so on. Uh, also, the other tools need to learn about the changes, so uh, we need to be able to notify them. And um, there has to be uh, done some actual configuration, so we need to turn uh, the internal state into kernel configuration and configuration of other tools like the ACB clients and uh, team, uh, team daemon for, uh, device for uh, machines that use teaming and so on. So this is quite, quite a lot of stuff, but it's very, very self-contained because uh, you, know, you know usually exactly what you want to work. The complexity lies uh, in how to achieve that and how to interoperate. Uh, I think really the most of the work uh, with Network Manager is about interoperability and nothing else. We have a stable branch where you don't see much uh, from what I will be talking about here. Uh, there are some important fixes. Uh, there are, uh, I mean, uh, during the development of the branch, there are some important fixes. Otherwise, otherwise it has uh, it, its new features as well. Uh, there are recent uh, changes, recent releases for uh, Blue S5 support, but that's something I'm not uh, really uh, interested so much in. So I'll skip that uh, quickly. 
And there's what we call 0910, which has not yet been released. And this is, uh, this is uh, the topic of the talk. So first of all, uh, it would be good to know uh, why there had to be a larger scale redesign or what was the purpose of it. And uh, traditionally, a uh, network manager was used for desktops and laptops. I think most of you knew about this already. Uh, who's using network manager on some laptop or desktop environment? Yeah, most of you, let's say. And who's using network manager on, on a server? Uh, Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly why the redesign was started, because uh, nobody wants to use network management server, uh, but, you know, there are some difficulties with that, because if you use different tools for servers, different tools for uh, laptops and so on, uh, what should I do if, you, if I want to install virtualization on my laptop and experiment, and uh, at the same time connect it to, to the Wi-Fi and so on. So is it a server or is it a laptop still? That's, uh, that's a big problem. There are also some use cases for, uh, for a dynamic service, uh, even, for, uh, even for servers. For example, DHCP is sometimes useful even, even for servers. Uh, some people use it. Is there anyone who uses uh, DHCP configuration on a server here? Do you know about someone? I think, I think maybe. Uh, uh, it depends, it depends. Um, a possible use case is uh, if, you, if you have a small server, which is uh, more like uh, network attached storage or so something like that, and you bring it from one network to, to another. It's, it's a typical server because it serves uh, the storage, the, the, the files but uh, it's often easily integrated into the network by just, uh, just connecting it. So uh, uh, some of you said you're uh, disabling network manager for servers. Uh, do you have any specific reasons? Well, it breaks the configuration, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, actually my third point here. Uh, network Manager in, in its current release versions often does something that breaks uh, to the configuration that is uh, prepared by your other tools. So that is a big problem and it's, uh, it's uh, maybe, maybe the main reason why the redesign was started. Uh, there are some minor issues like uh, that we want to have support for initramfs and, and uh, that we want to be able to restart or uh, all of the processes a network manager has when there's a security update with uh, the least possible disturbance of the network configuration. So very uh, simply, you install an update of either network manager or some tool that is used by network manager, then you want to restart network manager, but you want to still uh, still continue with your network connections, e.g., uh, for example, TCP connections. There's uh, one one point that uh, that makes this a little bit harder, and that's uh, that the network manager team or network manager project still tries to uh, stay uh, compatible with its previous versions. Uh, there has not yet been made any decision to. Uh, break compatibility again, and uh, such a decision is never, never popular. So let's say uh, we need to look uh, at the inner workings a little bit, uh, because all the features are related to the, to the core workings of Network Manager. Uh, at the beginning, we need to read uh, the on-disk files on this configuration, and we need to also start tracking devices that we find in the system. Uh, we need to initialize uh, the network interfaces. This is really, really easy, 
but uh, we also need to initialize uh, devices that uh, appear during the runtime, so uh, there it gets a little bit complicated. Um, we need to, uh, for each device, check the existing kernel configuration to see how the device is configured. Uh, we actually, uh, with the new code, uh, generate a connection profile or a connection, a connection object which is uh, the same type of object uh, that uh, we read from, uh, from the uh, disks, uh, from, the, from the files on the disks. So we can then compare the configuration. You can, you can imagine uh, that we uh, read a connection configuration from disk as well as from the kernel and other tools possibly. Uh, on the disk, there may be multiple configurations for the same device, or there may be a configuration that can be applied to any device. So that's, that's quite a lot of uh, options, quite a lot of stuff that, uh, that needs to be solved. Uh, and then when we can compare uh, the existing configuration with, uh, let's say, the list of configurations available for the device uh, in Network Manager, uh, we need to do some decision. This is a critical point because uh, there we decide whether the network manager will touch the device at all. This is so important because uh, when you have already some configuration from other tools uh, that uh, you need to be kept from uh, breaking by network manager, uh, this is the point where you want one network manager to decide uh, not to work with it, not to do anything with it. Uh, there's also a possibility to configure this uh, explicitly, so you can, you can blacklist devices in Network Manager and uh, not manage them at all. Uh, but this is uh, not so useful for virtualization because with virtualization you create all the devices dynamically and you need Network Manager to just detect that it's, uh, it's not meant for it to manage. Then. Uh, there are some uh, device-specific uh, initialization actions. For example, if you have Ethernet, Network Manager sets, it, uh, sets the Ethernet up. It's uh, necessary, at least from the desktop point of view. Uh, it's a little bit trickier from the server point of view. Uh, normally, uh, you don't apply any, uh, any connections uh, to a device that's not connected uh, by a cable to, to some other device, uh, let's say switch. So the only way to detect a uh, carrier is to already uh, allow the device to communicate over the wire. It's uh, level one or level two uh, communication but you still, you still need it. If we uh, left the device uh, down, we would not uh, get uh, the carrier, uh, carrier detection information. This may be a problem in some cases because sometimes you just don't want that. Uh, so again, uh, step back to decide about device management and you have to make Network Manager ignore your device if this is not what you want. Uh, then the, there's a purely uh, desktop feature to generate a default profile when there's no configuration uh, detected from the kernel and as well there's no configuration found on the disk. Typically Ethernet devices uh, on laptops and desktops are just connected using DHCP. Uh, so here that's not new. Uh, the new thing is that you can, you can explicitly disable it. Uh, it's a couple of uh, options already that you would probably like to use on servers. So uh, the Network Manager project uh, now ships a configuration file uh, that just, uh, that's called server.conf and uh, that carries a couple of, a couple of uh, usual uh, server uh, settings for you, so you can just uh, take this file and drop it in a special directory for that, um, and, and you're, you're done with basic server configuration. Because uh, by default, we still, 
want to keep the same behavior, so the default behavior is more suitable for laptops. And then if uh, we did not detect any configuration but found, found some suitable configuration on the disk or the default one was generated, uh, we need to activate it. There's also a similar procedure. Um, if we actually found a configuration on the disk that matches the actual configuration of the device, imagine you're booting up a system uh, in your in MFS, there's some network configuration. You start network manager in the real system. This is a newly started service. It, this, uh, it reads this, the kernel configuration and sees that the kernel configuration matches what uh, it would configure otherwise, or matches one of the possibilities it could configure otherwise. So then we just need to pick up the connection as it is and there's uh, some, of, some of the steps from uh, profile activation is used as well. Uh, some of the steps are skipped because they are not needed. That's, that's how it works. I will not uh, go uh, very carefully through this list. Uh, just uh, that uh, some of the supported devices in Network Manager are pretty new. It's uh, the teaming, which is a replacement for bonding. Uh, it's uh, devices like TAN, TAP, uh, tunnels using GRE, uh, Mac VLAN, Mac VTAP. These are, these are just uh, new additions. And there's something that's a little bit more interesting, interesting than uh, the individual device types, and that's generic device support. Uh, that's a possibility to use Network Manager to uh, manage a device whose low-level configuration is handled by some other tool. Um, it does not sound so amazing like that, uh, but uh, actually there was a long-standing long -standing problem of network manager not actually detecting um, the real network configuration. For example, if you had default routes set by another tool and it went through a device not managed by network manager, uh, network manager would uh, report that uh, we are not connected. For example, we are not connected to the internet, let's say, let's say it uh, in these terms. Uh, so this, uh, this will now be different because we can uh, manage just any device and we can follow the state of, uh, of devices that are not managed. So even if Network Manager doesn't touch the configuration of devices, it needs to follow the information uh, that the kernel provides. For example, if there's a default route through, uh, let's say, a bridge uh, that is set up by virtualization tools, Network Manager does not, uh, uh, does not manage the bridge, but it can see that uh, there's a default route and, and it will not make configuration changes uh, that would uh, break that. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, theory so far. It's not yet committed into Git. There are some branches with some development, so uh, <coughs> Be a little bit careful when testing it, uh, even if you, if you work with the Git master. Uh, not everything is uh, there yet. Uh, there's uh, a natural conclu conclusion of uh, what I was talking about, and that's that the state of uh, network manager devices, or network manager managed or even unmanaged devices, uh, needs to be ke kept and does not necessarily reflect uh, the on disk configuration. So this is a big change because uh, so far network managers uh, in internal configuration or runtime configuration was always the same as uh, the configuration written on the disk. This is no longer the case. You have uh, runtime uh, connection profiles uh, those uh, can uh, receive information not only uh, from the disk files, 
but also from the kernel, for example. So if you use uh, tools like uh, IP route or IF config to add IP addresses, then a network manager is capable of accepting those addresses and adding them to its internal configuration. If you then use a tool, a command line tool for a network manager called NMCLI, uh, you could eventually uh, save the resulting configuration uh, to again have, have uh, the same state on the disk as you have uh, in, in the runtime instance. There is some notion about uh, active connections because uh, they, have, they have some attributes uh, that do not belong to configuration stores stored on the disk. For example, a list of uh, dynamic addresses doesn't really belong to the on-disk configuration but is still kept uh, at runtime in Network Manager. Uh, the same is the list of DNS servers uh, taken from DHCP and so on. So many, many, many examples of data that, that is uh, important that sometimes needs to be queried by, by other tools and uh, that do not belong uh, to the on this configuration. Yeah. There's a number of questions about the behavior of disconnected uh, devices as well as the behavior of devices that are for some reason unmanaged or not managed by network manager, be it uh, auto detection that uh, the, the device was created or configured by a different tool or be it explicit configuration, doesn't matter so much. So if you have uh, runtime connections, you also have on disk connections, there's, uh, there's a relation between them. Uh, typically, on disk connections, when network manager stars are turned into runtime connections, you can have <coughs> connections uh, at runtime that don't have their on disk counterparts or are different. Uh, typically, um, network manager or uh, the previous versions of Network Manager always uh, reloaded the, co the configuration when you modify the files. Uh, <clears throat> it was uh, using uh, kernel's uh, inotify mechanism, which is uh, not really very good for, for this purpose, because various tools uh, perform the editing in various ways. So sometimes, uh, sometimes you end up uh, with network manager reading something that was not really meant as a final configuration. <clears throat> sometimes uh, you want to add some configuration that depends on another configuration. You don't want to track all the dependencies and, and put uh, things uh, in the configuration in, in, in the right order. You want simply to make the changes then ask for an explicit reload. This is, <coughs> this is already uh, possible with Git master as far as I know. And um, it is possible already to disable the auto reload, auto reload feature. It's still being discussed because uh, the last uh, thing was uh, that libvit has problems with that. Um, everybody expected or at least everybody I, I know expected uh, that turning off uh, automatic uh, reloading is a great thing. Uh, but Libvert uh, now uh, just, they, they, they just did not know what to do uh, to make Network Manager reload connections again. So we realized uh, Network Manager only exposes support for reloading all connections at once but it's not what they, what they wanted, and so on and so on. Those are implementation details, but um, I'm talking about them just to show you that there are still uh, like minor glitches that you uh, see uh, each time you make any modification. So there's nothing like, yeah, uh, the way A is wrong, the way B is right. Uh, change change the behavior from A to B and you're done with it. It's, it's not like that. Uh, any changes that are uh, reflected in the API are really, really uh, difficult to sell uh, to the other projects. So 
So as I said, uh, Network Manager can accept uh, external events. Those are not only uh, new addresses like I talked about, but those are also uh, edit or removed interfaces because in Linux you have lots of software interfaces that you can create and destroy like bridges, bonds and so on. <coughs> so this is also something that needs to be acted upon. Uh, there needs to be some logging support. Uh, that's already uh, quite good. And that's, that's uh, for now. At the beginning, I was uh, briefly talking about uh, the use case where you want to take over some existing configuration. So um, I already told you about, uh, about the reasons to do that. Uh, there are just, just some, uh, let's say, challenges maybe uh, in, in doing that because uh, if you want a configuration to be taken over, then that means you have to be able to leave the configuration still working when, when uh, quitting Network Manager. Um, my opinion is uh, that Network Manager or any other system daemon, when it's stopped, uh, that it should stop all, uh, all uh, processes that it used, including uh, stuff like WPA supplicant for Wi-Fi, including stuff like DACP client and so on and so on. Uh, that's um, uh, because uh, if you want to start a service again, uh, you always want to have all of those services in, in their uh, fresh uh, state or you want new, new versions of them that you just installed to be, to be already used for security reasons. <coughs> so there is a question uh, which uh, connections can be uh, left, left working for taking over. Uh, so far it's quite easy with Ethernet, unless of course you are using uh, 801.1.x, uh, uh, which is uh, via VPA supplicant. So, Whenever you're using WP, WP as applicant, uh, you cannot leave the connections working. That means uh, secure Ethernet, that means Wi-Fi. Um, for Wi-Fi, it's not a big problem because Wi-Fi is also often disconnected for other reasons, so that's, that's, uh, that's not a big deal. But also, uh, you need to look at the upper layers like DHCP, router advertisement, and so on. For DACP on IPv4, it's pretty easy because uh, the implementation of DACP in Network Manager uh, was simply uh, a call to DH client and an action script or uh, rather action executable which is given to DH client to use instead of its usual actions. So, when DH client uh, asks for uh, the configuration inf information, uh, the action executable is, uh, is used to convey the information to network manager. Otherwise, normally if you uh, run DH client by hand, it's uh, directly configuring the kernel, which is, which is uh, wrong because, or in the context of, of network manager, it is wrong because you might want to run like VPN software on top of uh, the Ethernet and so on. So you never know whether the configuration is final unless uh, it goes through Network Manager. Uh, with uh, router advertisements, there was a big problem because first of all, uh, router discovery in the kernel, the client side of router discovery is implemented in the kernel. Um, it's uh, really, really buggy. It does uh, do many, many things uh, wrong. So we considered uh, the option to fix it. Oh, it's somewhere. And uh, when we wanted to fix it, we realized that even if we fix uh, all of the individual problems, we still have the largest problem, and that is that uh, the router discovery support in kernel 
uh, writes the configuration directly to the routing tables and to the list of addresses and so on. So this is totally unsuitable for the same reasons and uh, we had to switch to a user space implementation. There was just an example of what, uh, what uh, needs to be done for a proper connection takeover. Now we can, uh, we can work uh, easily with DACP for IPv4 as well as uh, router discovery as well as DACP for IPv6. All of those are supported. Uh, we can uh, possibly take over software devices. It's not, not a big problem. Um, we just need to uh, compare them with the configuration we have and either, either uh, accept them or usually when a software device does not match uh, any known configuration in Network Manager, that means uh, it's created by another tool. So we uh, don't want to manage it. Even uh, things as simple as uh, the address list have some improvements now. Uh, we found quite quite a lot of interesting things in there uh, because typically if you want to add an IP address to uh, your device, you need to specify the device, you need to specify the address family, and you need to give it the address data and uh, the length of the prefix so that uh, an automatic route can be created to, uh, to uh, contact uh, other machines on the local network. So this is pretty easy, but formerly Network Manager also uh, used a gateway in its internal representation of the address, which does not match the kernel and does not match how, how things work. So this will be eventually removed. Uh, but uh, it did not uh, include the lifetime of the address, which is quite funny because uh, <coughs> uh, the lifetime is normally <coughs> not very useful for you because either the address is working or it's already expired. Uh, but for Network Manager, the, the lifetime can be also used to see whether the, the address is dynamic or not. In dynamic, uh, I mean, uh, even DACP uh, for IPv4, as that one did not use the lifetime even in the kernel, which we changed that. Uh, we asked a colleague that know, knows a bit more about the kernel to add uh, support to address lifetimes to uh, Linux's IPv4 uh, stack. So that now, uh, if, if Network Manager is uh, looking at uh, the interface and looking at a list of addresses, it can distinguish uh, which addresses are dynamic and which are static. Uh, dynamic addresses uh, from the kernel, from the kernel router discovery are easy to see because they have lifetimes. Uh, dynamic addresses from uh, Network Manager's uh, DH client instance is uh, easy to see as well, it's the same. <coughs> There's still a problem that uh, by default, if you run DH client directly, it does not use the lifetime at all. So in that case, you will not detect that properly. A network manager will think that the addresses are, uh, are static. That's not, a, that's not such a big problem because usually you expect to take over uh, configuration in Network Manager from Network Manager, from previous instance of Network Manager. There's one small thing uh, we may be adding also, it's the support for address labels, which is usually uh, just plain old uh, uh, Linux uh, alias device support. It's only uh, only because uh, uh, the, I <coughs> the IF config configuration is built on top of that, so for full compatibility we can't live without that. 
uh, but this is up to uh, up to the regular developers from Red Hat uh, who need to, to get this supported. It's uh, very similar if you look at the routes. Uh, the lifetime is not uh, currently implemented as it's not as important as with addresses, but um, eventually it will it will be there as well. We currently only support uh, single hop routes. That means uh, uh, you are sending the packets to just one router around. You're supporting just one gateway on the, net <coughs> on the network. I'm a little bit oversimplifying it, but uh, that's not something I would like to talk about here for a long time. Um, Still, the default uh, gateway information, which originally was bound to addresses, will not, will not be moved to the internal list of routes because it needs uh, more special treatment than ordinary routes. <coughs> Often, if you have a if you have a configuration uh, that does not make it to be the default one for default routing, imagine a computer with uh, two e Ethernet devices, both connected to some networks. Typically, you can have only one default route, so one of them has to be chosen. The same is for DNS, which also needs only one of, <coughs> one of the configuration to be chosen. Uh, there's the special handling. Normally, if, if those two networks are distinct, all other routes can be, can be added from both uh, configurations. There's one new thing that uh, I did not even yet uh, talk about with the other developers, but uh, we've talked about it with uh, people from, from the community. Um, it's uh, policy routing, which is uh, typically not supported by default or not configured by default. Uh, in Linux, but it's, that's a pretty neat thing uh, because uh, if you have uh, two links to uh, the internet, uh, it's uh, useful in very simple use cases where one of the links is, uh, is uh, the main one and the second one is only for maintenance purposes. Uh, if you uh, disable one of them, for example, if you disable the, the main connectivity because there's some, some problem, uh, security attack or something like that, uh, then because the default route goes through that, through that one, uh, you typically cannot connect to the computer anymore. So this feature is about the ability to connect to any of uh, the let's say public addresses, or they don't need to be fully public, <coughs> but uh, to connect over any of the channels and to choose, uh, choose uh, the channel uh, from outside by choosing the IP address of, of the machine. The only thing, the only technical thing you want from the machine is to answer you over the same channel, answer, answer you over, over the same network, that's all. Uh, if that is uh, done, there's uh, another thing that can that can be used, and it's uh, it's called multipath TCP. It's a protocol that allows you uh, to switch between multiple TCP channels. So, if you disconnect from one of the device from one of the networks, you can just uh, continue the connection over the, over the other one. If you connect back and then disconnect the, the second one, you can continue the connection of the first one. It means you have connection. You have uh, technically you have connections open over all of the interfaces, but uh, usually you are only uh, using one for for sending the data, and the other ones are are backup. If you want to uh, know more about this. 
uh, either you can you can look for it uh, on the internet or you can you can send me an email at the end of the presentation there there will be again a slide with uh, contacts so uh, you, sh you should be able to reach me easily when I was talking about the dynamic configuration um, I did not talk much into into the details, uh, but there are just a couple of things because um, when it's when it's done when it's finished it's uh, it's very easy to look at it because uh, we just decided to uh, perform all of uh, the network configuration protocols in user space, which was a good thing, and. Uh, uh, then simply uh, the core network manager decides what to do with the data. So there's, there's quite a lot of flexibility. Recently, um, there were some, some minor improvements with the dynamic configuration. Um, it was about uh, DHCP for IPv6 uh, DUID support. Um, it's also very simple because we are just reusing uh, ETC uh, machine ID from systemd to construct a unique identifier. That's uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, how it works with the ACPv6 and that uh, you can't uh, really use uh, MAC addresses for identif identifying the client computers as you did with IPv4 and so on. Um, Again, if you want, if you want to go into details, we can talk about it uh, somewhere. Uh, you can often find me uh, at the at the Fedora booth, so uh, we can we can talk about it uh, outside of the talk. There's one thing that I recently looked at, uh, and that's uh, Network Manager uh, IP connectivity methods. I would like to show you if I'm connected, yes. I started a uh, page on, on the Fedora Wiki and uh, I'm trying to summarize uh, the way uh, configuration, IP configuration methods are used currently in Network Manager and, uh, and also uh, to propose some better solutions because currently, I don't know if it's big enough, probably yes, but let's try a little bit. <coughs> currently, um, if you read through the table, um, my advice is to read uh, separately the blue lines and, and the green lines because it's the two separate protocol versions. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, IPv4 supports disabled, uh, a special link local method, manual, automatic, and shared. Shared is uh, uh, for a connection sharing where the, where the computer acts as a network address translation router for the network. It's like the classic one from who used to use Windows. I used to use it uh, in the time of Windows XP. So, so for me, for me, that's uh, that's uh, the source. Uh, if you look at IPv6, it's a lo little bit different. Uh, there is a special ignore method that comes from the times when Network Manager did not uh, support IPv6 properly. Uh, it. Uh, did you the favor of not touching the IPv6 configuration in the kernel at all. Uh, it's um, becoming less and less useful, uh, so we may eventually phase it out, uh, but there is nothing that would be called disabled in uh, IPv6. And as well, if you look at the column of uh, link local, um, you can see that uh, there's a difference between IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 does not use link local addresses 
at all, except uh, when you use the link local method. So link local IPv4 addresses are used for a, uh, usually for a fallback situation where you don't have any DHCP router. You have directly connected computers or a couple of computers connected via a switch and all of them can fall back to the link local method, which is not a feature in network manager. This is how, it, how it's typically used. So it's not even supported uh, in that way. Uh, it's supported by Windows and Apple, I think, mostly. Um, but uh, with IPv6, uh, the link local address is always there because it's used for all, all of the other protocols. So um, my idea is uh, actually to break down all of those methods and use actually the features individually. There are some, <coughs> some uh, uh, possibilities you can, you can get with that. Uh, if uh, you just uh, say link local, manual, automatic, and uh, G is uh, gateway for other hosts or shared. Uh, you can construct a table of all possibilities. Some of the con con configurations don't make sense. Those are the gray ones. Uh, some of the configurations uh, uh, actually have some method in network manager. So this is how it, how it already works. But you can see many, many uh, combinations of possibilities that are not supported for some reason. And one of them is uh, what's called disabled in IPv4. Uh, disabled in IPv4 uh, means that you don't have any link local address, means that you don't have any manual address, uh, not any automatic, not any DHCP address, and uh, connection sharing is turned off. This is something we currently don't support with IPv6. And <laughs> when we wanted to add this, we realized there is a kernel problem because we can't turn off link local addresses in kernel, which are, which are indeed generated by the kernel. So uh, we don't have the choice in, in network manager whether to add them or not. Uh, as well, we can, uh, we can uh, work around this by disabling IPv6 entirely, but uh, that has some, some implementation issues in the kernel. So there will be things to be researched in the kernel. I will not go through all of them because it's, uh, uh, it's just for those who are really, really interested in the deep details. And those of you can, can find this page and look, look at that. There are some, uh, some typical examples of uh, uh, things that are not supported. For example, uh, it's a situation where uh, you have IPv6, or is it? No, uh, sorry. IPv4. You have IPv4. You want to have a link local address to be able to communicate over, over it at any time, as is usual with IPv6. And that's all. And that's currently not supported. You can't use those uh, two features together. Uh, the same uh, combination, but uh, for IPv6, is normally supported because in IPv6, uh, the link local address is, a, is usually perceived as a must. But uh, if you just swap the first value, whether you want the link local address or not, you're getting to another line. And it's when you want only, only manual IPv6 address for IPv4 it's supported. But uh, if you want to have one manual IPv6 address that's possible, it's uh, even used by uh, tools like uh, OpenVZ which is a virtualization or rather a container, uh, container virtualization tool, uh, which uh, sometimes just adds uh, single IPv6 global addresses to your virtuals. Uh, with a network manager, you can't uh, currently 
uh, set this up because you can't simply disable the link local address and only use the global one that you set up like it was uh, used with IPv4. This is not possible uh, again. Uh, this is not possible in the kernel. So I hope I did not bore you to death with this table. Um, there are a couple of things that, uh, that will uh, need a bit more research. And then we could uh, end up with, instead of having IPv4 method, uh, IPv6 method, we could uh, actually end up, this is really just a proposal, uh, in a couple of configuration values that would allow, allow you uh, a lot of more flexible configurations, including, it's not the end of all tables, but almost. Uh, for example, I heard about uh, uh, a new draft, or maybe it was, it was an older draft resurrected, uh, to only do the HCP on IPv6. I don't know how far it got, but uh, I heard it as an argument uh, against my uh, previous uh, proposal. So this modification counts with that possibility as well. Uh, so you want to have a link local IPv6 address. Actually, you need it in order to uh, perform the ACP. But you would want to explicitly skip uh, router discovery. With the current state of the art, state of the art uh, this uh, is not possible according to the standards because uh, the ACP version 6 uh, cannot convey uh, routing information. But if there are some drafts to add stuff like that, it could be possible. So uh, the, final, uh, the final proposal is very, very flexible. And it would also allow you to do stuff like um, use uh, link local addresses as fallback uh, to uh, I see a little bit uh, I will need to fix this table a little bit. Um, if you ignore the header of the table, uh, it's, it just uh, should mean that uh, you want to fall back to link local address after the ACP is, uh, is tried without success. So this is something we don't support currently, but uh, with, uh, with a set of options like, uh, like this, it could be very easily supported because you would just choose to link local address and, and the fall back. So, um, why am I showing you uh, features we don't have? Why am I showing you uh, stuff that uh, has not yet been uh, even very much consulted? Because I just uh, posted links to this page to various places where, where it's due. For example, to all related uh, Bugzilla, um, uh, Bugzilla reports. Those are listed at the bottom of the page. Um, you have the chance to look at stuff like this, not only, not only this particular thing. You have the chance to uh, look at the Bugzilla and actually um, either by coding or by just answering or presenting your use cases, uh, you, can, uh, you can change um, or you can affect uh, how uh, the future uh, development of network manager will be done. So this is, this is mostly uh, the reason why I'm showing you details like, like this one. Because you may have found something uh, that uh, constitutes a, a feature you would like or you would need. And unless uh, we can really justify it uh, by real use cases, uh, it won't be there. I will not much go into the details of uh, connection sharing. Um, you can think yourself about the challenges of connection sharing with IPv6 
where uh, network address translation is maybe not an option because applications may not be ready for it. Technically, you can translate addresses. You can do the same as you, as you do with IPv4, uh, but it may be, you may, you may come into problems because applications just expect uh, full global routability of IPv6 addresses. So <coughs> this is something, something for uh, thinking about. There are some possibilities, uh, like uh, DACP can provide you with addresses even for your other networks, not only for your, uh, for your connection to the local network. <coughs> it's called prefix delegation. You can read more about it. It's all in theory. There's one bug report for that on uh, Network Manager Upstream Bugzilla, uh, so that people can, can put their, their ideas And we are getting close to the end. Um, currently, uh, the DNS backends uh, can do various things for you. The core DNS support uh, just writes uh, etc resolve conf, which is a very, very um, basic or let's say even stupid way uh, to configure DNS. Uh, we have support for um, uh, for DNS mask, which can act as local uh, resolver or local recursive name server. And with with uh, DNS mask, it's also possible to direct uh, uh, some uh, queries or queries to some uh, domains uh, to their res respective name servers. For example, if you're connecting to your company VPN, uh, you sometimes may have to use your company DNS servers for your company uh, host names, but you still may want to uh, use the ordinary DNS servers for everything else. So that's, uh, that's not possible with ResolveConf, that's possible with uh, DNS mask, which is supported. Uh, Unbound is not yet supported. Um, but that would allow, allow you to do the, to do the same uh, with some improvements as Unbound does not need to be restarted for reconfiguration. And it would also add you uh, the support for uh, DNSSEC, which is the main point of uh, integrating Unbound and Network Manager. There have been already done some work using dispatcher D scripts. Uh, my colleague uh, Tomáš Hoza was working on this and uh, most of this feature is, uh, is now done using the script. It's not, uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, I think after rewrite to, uh, to a module for network manager, it will, it will work uh, much better. And I don't think I want to go into details about DNSSEC here, but uh, there's again the same problem. If you turn on DNSSEC and require DNSSEC validation for a global, uh, global uh, DNS uh, route, uh, then you can have a problem with your company uh, host names and company name servers, which you still need uh, to uh, resolve the host names, the company host names for you, and as well, uh, you may need to uh, not use the requirement for DNSSEC validation for them because they probably don't support it, and you need to have configuration that will uh, that will turn uh, the support for uh, DNSSEC uh, per your connection, for example, VPN or. It could even be a wired connection if you are in the company inside. It's, it doesn't matter uh, so much what type of, of connection it is. And you can have uh, then configuration of DNS and DNSSEC different for each interface and different globally as well. The API is being improved. That's the main message here. Uh, 
the command line tool is uh, now being improved so much that it can be used instead of the API. The API is, you can, you can choose a dbus for the API or you can use a library that sits on top of dbus. It, it's, uh, it's up to you. Um, it's quite easy to interface with Network Manager from C or Python, maybe some other languages, just any language supporting dbus and so on. So this is, there's not much to talk about. Um, I think just, just the CLI, uh, you need to try it. You need to install uh, the Git version or wait for, for the release and try the NM CLI because uh, before, before now, the NM CLI was not really usable for, for anything useful, for anything real. So try it, try it and see, see what it can do for you. Network Manager has four regular developers at Red Hat. I'm not one of them anymore, uh, but there's a new guy, so there are four, four again. Uh, it has individual contributors like me. It has distribution maintainers uh, contributing to it. I don't know if anyone is here at LinuxCon uh, from Debian, SUSE, uh, Gen2, and so on. Multiple people from Gen2. Gen uh, I forgot to mention Ubuntu because there's, there's uh, some guy uh, trying to do testing and so on. Uh, people can help by uh, triaging the bugs, by going through them, explaining some, some more things to the reporters and so on. Uh, currently, it's mostly just the developers and me who do that. Using testing, bug reports, everything is, everything is good. good for the project. So it's not only one company project, so it's a real, real open source project. Uh, it has been getting better over the past uh, one year, so I hope it will get even better in the future as well. That's all from me. Um, because there's no one going just, just after me uh, to talk. Uh, we have enough time for questions. Anyone can ask, ask me uh, about questions. You know, sure? You mentioned firewall integration. What's that going to look like? Uh, currently, firewall integration is done only by publishing uh, zone information. Uh, that means uh, you can you can attach uh, some some zone. It's really really very similar to how Windows firewalling works. If you attach like a public zone or work zone or something, firewall you can then uh, reconfigure the the, div, the firewall for the specific device. Uh, further, network manager uh, needs to do some needs to uh, add some rules to the kernel for network sharing. So I'm, I'm mostly focusing uh, those two things. The second one is currently done uh, by IP tables commands, not FireVoldy, which is, which is a problem uh, on systems where FireVoldy is used. Can, can the zoning be specified based on, uh, for example, what IP address you receive rather than just interfaces? Uh, the zone for FireVoldy or? Uh, yeah, the zoning for FireVoldy. Is that based just on uh, what interface is currently active or based on what IP address you have? How can you configure uh, The zone for firewall is based on uh, uh, the connection profile that is used for the interface. So you can actually have multiple zones active if you have multiple interfaces. And what you're asking for is to detect uh, the local network or to see to see whether whether this specific network uh, w should be should be marked as home or work or something else, is it true? Uh, this would actually be implied by a feature to uh, to apply connections uh, uh, according to this cr criteria. So it would not be a specific uh, feature relating relating to firewall integration, but it's uh, it's uh, really a wanted feature to, to have. Um, 
a simple example, I connect, uh, I connect my computer by cable in the company. I want a uh, network manager to detect where I am and I want to perform network configuration based on that, including the zone. Uh, this is a desired feature. Uh, there's no one currently working on it. Contribution would be welcome, of course. But it's a rather, rather complicated task. Or not very complicated, but still, still, still not a basic one. More questions? Uh, next Fedora release, release is uh, 20. Um, actually, I, I, I will apologize and avoid this question as this is up to the, the other developers who are, who are also maintaining network management Fedora. Because if I, if I answer some guesses here, um, it's better to, to write them. It's better to write either to the mailing list or to enable them directly. They're responsible for this. I'm sorry. The, the schedule for the network manager 0910 release, is that fixed or? Um, the date? No, no, it's, it's based on the features. And actually there are lots of, lots of uh, features wanted for, for that release. So we'll see. Uh, the solution for distributions like Fedora, which are, which are a little bit more uh, bleeding edge than, than usual, uh, is usually to, u to use uh, snapshots from the Git master. Do you see any future for network manager in embedded environments? Embedded than uh, Yes, yes. Um, it depends on how you define embedded environments because uh, it was in, in the previous talk uh, the, the question was, was asked. But for example, if I consider my home router as uh, embedded, I would, like, I would like it to support uh, VPNs as Network Manager does, for example. Uh, if it was an, some sort of appliance that I can bring somewhere, I also would like to use the VPNs. I, th I think the VPNs are currently, currently the, main, the main driver. Because otherwise, uh, op in Open Embedded, there's uh, NativeD, which is uh, used by OpenWRT, which seems to be also quite, quite good for, for uh, like the purposes where you don't have desktop tools sitting on top and so on. So, so yes, yes, uh, I indeed, indeed do. Also for IPv6 configuration and stuff like that, it depends on if if you have a simple simpler uh, tool that is uh, good enough for you, that might be more suitable than Network Manager. But uh, if you don't have such a tool, Network Manager is not so big. It's not so not so bloated as is sometimes uh, told by people. Um, so it can it can be used for its features, yes, even in embedded. You ask a difficult question. I gave a stupid answer. I know it, but um, it really depends on the case. So if that is all, um, any questions can be can be asked via email or we can talk about stuff uh, after, after we finish here. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for being here. And we are finished. <laughs>